There we go. <clears throat> okay, so we are going to do a quick recap of the things that we have been doing um, over the past few weeks just to get ourselves back on track. So let's have a quick look. We have an A, a 65 and an interesting table that is uh, lined up on the screen right now. So for those of you who are part of our Zoom group, can you pop into the chat? Um, why do we have the letter A and 65 up on the screen? Can you remember what the significance was of the number 65? Excellent. So from Bean, I have got that it is a deanery number. Absolutely. So 65 is indeed a deanery number. I'm going to grab my draw from up here so I can pop onto the screen. So you can see this one is definitely a deanery number. So a deanery number, and sometimes it looks like it might be um, denary, but it's actually deanery. So deanery numbers are the number system that we use. So we count 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. And in order to get a 10, you have to take a 1 and a 0 and put them together. So using A as 65, do we remember what the character set was called? And you can pop this into the chat. So if you are chatting, um, you can do this to everybody or you can do this privately to me. And that's for the Zoom chat. Um, so on here, what number or what character set were we using that gave the number 65 to the letter A. See if you can remember what it's called. Oh. We talked, we did indeed talk about abstraction, but this one was actually called ASCII. So here, the ASCII character set, so A S C I I. <clears throat> ASCII is the character set which took everything from just our keyboard and just our keyboard means that um, we haven't got things like the European letters, we haven't got anybody else's alphabet if it's global. Um, so therefore, we have a very, very small character set to work on, but that's quite useful for us. And today you are going to require pen, paper and some colouring pens. So last time we looked at how we could take letters and numbers and put them into a digital version on our computer. And the way that our computer thinks uses a very specific, uh, <clears throat> so, excuse me, it uses a very specific type of um, number set. So we talk about our number system being deanery, but what does a computer use? Can you? Pop that into the chat. Hey, Mr. Strange in our Zoom group said binary. Absolutely. So we need to use binary in order to put these into our computer. That's ones and zeros because it literally relates to on and off. So what we are going to do is we're going to do a little bit of a recap of how to change our 65 into binary. So here, we can't put 128 into 65, so we're going to put a zero. We can put 64 into 65, so we're going to put a one. And then we take 65 and we minus 64, which leaves us with one. Now, at this point, what we can do is we can work out, well, we're now working with the number one because we've used 64 from our columns. So therefore, we're going to take 32. We can't put 32 into 1, so that's a 0. Same for 16. Can't put 8 into 1. Can't put 4 into 1. Can't put 2 into 1. But we can put 1 into 1. So we put that there. 1 minus 1 equals 0. Now, if we end up at the end with a 0, that means we've probably got it right. So this is binary. 
Now, when we then want to turn that into uh, something even more, we want to maybe turn that into a picture. We don't actually use binary for our pictures. Ultimately, when it goes all the way down um, and it goes into our um, <clears throat> into our computers, it will turn into binary. But if we want to create a picture, we have to use a third number system. And that third number system is called hexadecimal. Now, I'm going to just walk, walk you through. I'm actually going to insert down here. Oh, wait. <clears throat> I'm going to insert, go to the home, um, a new slide, blank one. And I'm going to explain why each of these number systems are called what they are. So we've got binary. We've got deanery. And then we've got hexadecimal. So if I was just to take, um, if I go back to my drawer, let's grab a slightly, in fact, let's take a rainbow pen. So we've got binary, we've got the den from the denary, and then we're going to take the hex and the deck from hexadecimal. Oh, excellent. So I've just got a message from Bean that says in our um, in our Zoom group um, that binary is by because there's two, there's only one and zero. Awesome. That is brilliant. I'm going to take my space pen and I'm going to write that in. So by means two. Now that means I've got one or zero. Now, can somebody in our Zoom group type into the chat for me. Now you can do this openly to everybody or you can do this privately to me. What do you think the DEN stands for? Now this is a little bit to do with Latin. So DEN and DEC technically mean the same thing. Mr. Strange, you are absolutely correct. It is 10. So 10 for denary or deanery. Now that's because we have zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine. So we have 10 separate digits in the deanery number system. And that means that in the deanery number system, you can then take any number of those and combine them together to make any other set of numbers. Now, hexadecimal, we want to probably think about the shapes at this point. Now, we know that deanery and the deck um, mean the same thing. So we've got a 10 here and we're going to add it together. And I can see that lots of you are sending me private messages. This is absolutely fabulous. I have six from Bean. I have six from Mr. Strange. Brilliant stuff, Zoom group. We have six plus 10. Now, that means that in hexadecimal, we have 16 different digits. Now that means we've got 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, but instead of 10, because of course we've got 16 different digits, we then need to expand it so that we then have some more digits. Now of course we've now run out of numbers, so what do we add? Come on, Zoom group, what should we add next if we've run out of numbers? Brilliant. So, Spud, you've given me an A. Mr. Strange, letters. Bean is letters as well. We are absolutely going to add some letters. So we're now going to do A, B, C, D, E, and F. Now, that's going to give us 16 different characters. And that's going to also tell us how to set out our numbers when we are trying to talk about colours. So our hexadecimal number system uses binary and deanery and then adds even more. Now, what the nice thing about using hexadecimal is that you can represent really, really big numbers with fewer digits. 
Now, ultimately, to your computer, it makes no difference whatsoever because actually everything automatically gets changed into binary anyway. But for humans, hexadecimal is much easier to use. So I'm going to pop down here that this is for humans. Okay, so we are going to go back to our original 65. Um, and I'm going to get rid of some of these bits and pieces at the bottom here. Because what we're going to do is we're going to take our 65 and we're going to turn it into a hexadecimal number. So down here, what we are going to have is, let's change this one and let's grab a red because it's nice and clear what we're doing. <clears throat> so we turned our A into the binary number 65. But in order for us to turn into hexadecimal, we have to split our byte in half. Now, I just called this a byte. If you are in my Zoom group, can you type into the chat what the meaning of a byte actually is? Testing your knowledge here. <laughs> so Bean has said four bits or something like that. You're really close. Um, a byte is actually eight bits. So over here, one bit is a single one or zero. A byte is eight bits. And that means that half a byte, which is also four bits, is therefore a nibble. So half a byte is a nibble, or one byte is two nibbles. Now, when we split this up into two separate nibbles, what we have to do to our columns is we have to essentially start the columns again. So I'm going to take my red pen. I'm going to get rid of the 16, 32, 64, and the 128. And I'm going to put my 1, 2, 4, and 8 are gone. <clears throat> so the reason I'm doing my 8 again here is because I am restarting my nibbles. So for every four bits, I'm going to calculate them as if they are a single uh, item. So you can see here, I've got one, two, four, and eight. And I'm going to add up the columns where there is a one. So in this case, I have one. And in this column, I have four. So therefore, I can say in an A is my character. So I'm going to put double quotes around it to show that that's a character, which equals 65 in base 10, which is deanery, which also equals 4, 1 in base 16. Notice I didn't call it 41 because it's not actually 41, it's 4, 1. Let's try something a bit more complicated. So I'm going to go down to here and say, well, I know that A is 65. <clears throat> So let's do a number which is a little bit bigger. So B is going to be 66, 67, 68, 69, 70, 71, 72. I'm going to keep going. 73, 74, 75, 76. Tell me when to stop my Zoom group. I've lost it. 65, 66, 67, 68, 69, 70, 71, 72, 73. Am I stopping? 74, 75, 76, 77. Oh, Bean said stop. OK, so M is 77. Let's see what this looks like if we put it back into here. So we are going to get rid of all of this. So we want to do M, so we want to draw which is 77. 
7. Now this is slightly different because if we were going to have um, 77, it's not 64 plus 1 because that's 65. So let's have a think back. We're nearly there. So at the moment we're doing 77. So 77 minus 64. Okay, what do we have left? Excellent, Miss Strange, thank you very much. We have 13. So we're now working with 13. So we can't put 32 into 13, so that's still a zero. Can't put 16 in there. However, we can put an 8. So now we're going to do 13 minus 8. What do we have? We have 5. Thank you very much, Bean. We have 5. So we're now working with a 5. We can put 4 in there, so that's useful. So we're going to do 5 minus 4, which is 1. So we can't put two into one, but we can put one into one. So one, oh, one minus one, that gives us zero, which means we're right. So at this stage, what we want to do is we want to take our binary number and we want to split it in half into our two nibbles. So you can see our eight bit binary number goes all the way up to 128. However, we want to put these into their nibbles like this. One, two, four, eight. And now we can work out what our hexadecimal number is by going all the way back into deanery, but just for the nibbles. So for here, by that, so we've got four on this side, but this time, if I add up my columns, I've got eight plus four, which gives me, come on Zoom group, you can do this, 12, brilliant, thank you Spud. Um, and then if I add one, I've then got 13. Now, 13 is no good to me whatsoever, because if I have 13, I've got two digits. So if we go and have a look down here, what we can do is we can identify what our number is. So it's 13. So A is technically 10, 11, 12, 13. So that's our magic letter there. That's a 14 and that's a 15. So actually this should be, if we go back into here, instead of 13, this equals D. So interesting question from Bean, why didn't you count the others? Okay, so the reason I didn't count the others is because they stay the same. So a zero in hexadecimal is the same as a zero in deanery, and a one in hexadecimal is the same as a one in deanery. So if I have a single digit, this stays as the digit. So instead of having 413, actually I've got 4D. So M is 77, 77 in deanery, but 4D in hexadecimal. This gets a little bit um, better when you get into the really high numbers. So if you had a number which is going to be something like 255, um, and in fact, what we'll do is I'll show that one to you as well. So 255 actually has three digits. So two, 255. And again, this is in deanery. So that's our standard number system. I'm going to oh, I'm going to use my razor and get rid of all of this. There we go. It's all gone. Now, 255 is a special number when we're talking about bytes because it is the maximum number that you can represent using a byte. And that is because it is all of these numbers added 
up together. So it's the maximum. So if I was to take this and turn it into hexadecimal, again, splitting up, getting rid of all of these, one, two, four, and eight. Now, if I add them up, what I have on both sides, if I add eight plus four plus two plus one, zoom group, what do I have if I add them all together? I have, Mr. Strange, well done, I have 15, absolutely. Can anyone remember what 15 was when we placed it in hexadecimal? Remember to count A equals 10. So if A equals 10, brilliant stuff. I can see my Zoom group have already got there. A equals 10, B equals 11, C equals 13. We can keep going, we can keep, oh no, equals 12. We can keep going and if we look at this one, A is 10, B is 11, C is 12, D is 13, E is 14, F is absolutely Zoom group, it is 15. So here I have F, F and that means that 255 in our deanery number is then F, F in hexadecimal. So we can actually represent a really big number using fewer digits. And I can see Alex is following us along on Facebook here. So F, F, when we look at colors, we can go from zero, zero. Now we actually use six hexadecimal um, digits for most web colors. And therefore, we can go from 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, which is black at one end of the spectrum, to F, 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 which is white at the other end. Now, technically, I could get you to have a look at all of the different web colours, but we're going to reduce it down today. We're going to reduce it down to just a few letters. So you can see here, I've created a letter grid. And this is something that I would like you to do in between your lessons. So I'm going to show you how to do it today. And as we're walking along, you can help me to create um, an image. So we're going to create an image using just colours. And it means that we can then take these letters and embed secret messages inside our pictures. So what we're going to do is we are going to assign an individual colour to each letter. So we're not using the hexadecimal numbers that a lot of uh, web colours use. And the reason being is because otherwise you are going to end up with an awful lot um, of different, uh, different colours. And I am going to leave you a bit of a challenge at the end of this to see if you can work out exactly how many different colours you can represent with six different hexadecimal digits. So on this one, what I'm going to do is I'm going to add in some colours. So I'm going to go here, I'm going to go to my table design, and I'm going to select some shading. So to start off with, I'm going to put A like that. Now that's made that A very difficult to read, so I'm going to turn that into a white A there. So I've got exactly been, thank you, so A is going to be red. So every time you see red in my picture as I draw it, it's going to be an A. Then I'm going to shade B as orange. C is going to be yellow. So this is why I said to you to have some colouring pens um, at the ready. So for this one, in order for this to work perfectly, you would need to have 26 different colours, which is definitely not as much as you would have for a hexadecimal um, colour system. But we'll get there. So here's our blue. Here we go. And G is going to, so I'm going to be setting out. Now you could create something like this, um, or you could write out a list of all of your, um, your alphabets, and you could do a little bit of shading next to it to show what colour you're going to use. And you don't have to use the same colours as me. So I'm going to use, in fact, I'm going to use that sort of deep purple there for my H. Um, 
and some of these I'm gonna to have to start using some more slightly different colors so let's uh, let's do like a light a light blue there um, I can have that's different oh there's an awful lot going on here I've got a brown so uh, pride letters yes absolutely we've done some pride letters um, I'm going to do a slightly different sort of like a beigey colour. We want to have them different enough so that we can tell the difference between each of the colours. So when we put in our secret message, you can tell definitely which one is which. So something here we don't have. So we don't have like a really, really light green, um, but they definitely have to be different enough. Now, I seem to have run out of basic ones. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use more fill colours I could put these over here. So we don't have a super bright pink. Um, we don't have, let's go to more fill colours again, um, a super pale yellow. Oh, now those two are quite close together. So I think we're probably just about okay with those ones. But you can see here, what we're trying to do is we are trying to grab in some different colors so we can definitely tell the letters apart and then what we're going to do is we're going to develop a picture which is going to be able to spell initially our names so at this stage i can see people are are picking out what i'm trying to do here and you are absolutely correct so i'm going to have a a light nice lilac here Um, let's do some more blues, shall we? Um, that's pretty much all the... I might do a grey, actually, because I haven't got a grey. And I'm starting to run out a little bit at this stage. So you can see this, this gets really, really tough. Um, so I'm, I'm going to go for some more pinks, I think. That's definitely different. That's a super, super bright pink. Um, let's do some more reds. So we haven't got many reds. And I could maybe do a slightly darker grey and make that white to make it easier to read. Um, let's do some more oranges, shall we? So we've got like a, a mid orange, but I can't see any really super bright oranges. So let's. Nope, that's far too close. So you can see there I could put a B in and I could read that. And unless I was actually using a color picker, um, so a special um, type of color picker, which essentially gives you the hexadecimal code, um, it would be very difficult for me as a human to actually tell those apart, even though they are very, very slightly different. Um, so we want to make sure that we have definitely got something which is showing us this one. So let's keep going. There we go. I'm going to do that. I'm going to go to table design and I'm going to keep doing this. Now, if you wanted to do this in PowerPoint, then absolutely you could. And I do quite a lot of my stuff in here in uh, in PowerPoint, because what I can do is I can also move around like this. And you can see here what I've just done is I've gone into RGB. Can anybody in the Zoom group remind me what does RGB actually stand for? Red, green, blue. Brilliant. Well done, Bean. OK, so red, green, blue. Now, of course, what I can do is I could change that to hue, saturation and luminescence. And that's um, very close to uh, what you would have for a JPEG. But I'm going to stick with my RGB. So my RGB is going to be all the way up here. Um, and it's gone black. And the reason it's gone black is because with my RGB. If I go there. Even though I had it all the way up here, I had this little arrow at the bottom. So I need to go all the way up. And if you can see there, our numbers are changing. They never go above 255. 
So I'm going to stick it right in the middle. So we've got a nice bright, bright green. Um, oh, yes, we have a pure black and a pure white. That's an excellent plan, Alex. So X is going to be white. Y is going to be completely black. And we'll turn that Y into a white one so we can see it a little easier. And then finally, we need one final color for Z. So let's go for more fill colors. Let's go for a custom color. And oh, like a pastel yellow has been. OK, so let's put ourselves over in the yellow like that. And then I think we've got we've got a pastel yellow for O. So I wonder if we could do sort of more of a let's do like a pillar box red. And we also need to change this V because the V is still too close to the B. So I'm going to go back into my shading. I'm going to go to my more fill colors. And over here, I'm going to make that. I'm going to make that brown, I think. That's just about different. I could be really fussy with this. And I can make it dark brown. And again. Change that text to white to make it easier to read. Right, we have all of our colours set up. Yes, you are absolutely right, darker. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to then refer back to this. So what I could do is I could use my snipping tool. So if you are following on a Windows machine, you can use the thing called the snipping tool, which allows you to take um, a copy of a certain section of your screen. So this is what the snipping tool looks like. And I can go, I'm going to do a new one. You can see everything kind of goes a bit pastely. And then I can click and I can drag a certain section of the screen. That allows me to copy. Now I'm going to use Control C on my keyboard um, and then minimize it. And then over here, I can then paste that over here as a picture and make it a little bit smaller. So we've got a key. Now, this is where it gets exciting, because what we get to do is we get to take what we got for our alphabet and we're going to create a secret message. So I'm going to start doing this across the top because this is going to need to um, be adjusted as we go. So let's make them all in the middle. OK, so I'm going to start off by putting in my name. So I can do an H, O, an L, an L, and a Y. Now, I might not necessarily want to put those letters in um, the, that particular order. I might decide to change them so that they are every third um, square. What we're actually creating here is an image called a bitmap. And each one of the squares represents a pixel. So those of you who are in my Zoom group, can you tell me in a bitmap, what is a pixel? Oh, beans forgotten. So a pixel is a, the smallest part of an image. So they are very, very small squares. Amazing, Mr. Strange, a square to create a picture. Yes. So they are squares of a single color. So the bigger the pixel is, the more we sometimes we call um, our pictures pixelated because they go all blocky and we can see these squares that appear. And each one of those squares is a single, um, a single color. The smaller they get, the more intricate and clear our pictures become. Now we're going to create something which is blocky because otherwise we would have to spend ages and ages actually watching this. So what we're going to do is initially I'm going to color these squares to match our alphabet. So if I wanted to encode my name into my new bitmap, I would start off taking this first square and you can do this too. Make sure you've got your pen and paper, create yourself a grid, write in, in pencil so that you can hide it, your name and then start to color them the right 
colours as you go. So here I can have a look. So I've got a purple to start off here. So I'm going to go to my table design. And you'll see here, because I've been using PowerPoint, I've got all of the recent colours as well. So that one's going to go purple. And then my O is a nice sort of yellowy, pale yellow shade. So that's that one, I think. Oh, no. There it is. There's my O. My L, my, oh, now that's interesting. My L is that sort of strange sort of camely, camely colour, uh, which I think is that one. It's almost like a gold. No, not quite. There it is. So I'm going to do that one. And the same for that one. And then the Y is black. So at this point, what I can now do is I can now take this and I can place it slightly further out so that my name where I've encoded it then starts to create a picture. Or what I could do is I could perhaps leave my message across the top there. So I'm going to take away the letters because they've now been encoded as colours. Now, if you've written your message really, really lightly across, it means now you can rub that message out because you've now got the colours to represent them. So there is my message. And I might want to, uh, say, insert a text box down here. And this might be like a secret message. Um, and as they get past the picture, um, they get told, look, for the first five letters. So this is the most basic way of creating your secret message. So the first five letters are the message. And then I might decide that actually this, um, this is going to create um, a nice little pattern. So in here, my table design might actually be uh, that I'm going to do this. Um, now, this actually doesn't make any difference. It doesn't actually mean anything because the secret message is actually just hidden here. And then I might decide that that one is there. So what I'm doing at this point is I'm just creating what looks like a picture. So this side, let's have a look. How many have we got? So I could have another black one there. Two more camel here. A nice simple one there and another purple there. And then, of course, I could might go the other way and do this. And you can see there what I'm doing is I'm creating a bitmap that then looks a little bit like it used to be or, or in fact is meant to be um, something which is I've realized I've done that wrong. That should be a white one. So in this one, it looks like it's meant to just be a picture when in actual fact, what we've done is we have encoded a secret message. So here I might put that one there. I might decide that I've got two there. And on and on. And you can keep going until you make it into a picture. Now, if we wanted to make this a little bit more complicated, I might decide that actually I want to do a secret message which is a little bit more complex and better hidden. Because just having your um, message across the top like that is all very well. But once somebody realizes that there's a secret message in there, they're going to want to um, be able to crack it really, really quickly. So therefore, if you put it all in a row, they're going to find all of the different letters really quick. So let's take this. Let's get rid of the shading. And let's come up with a new secret message. So I'm going to say, look at every even pixel. Okay, so I'm now going to get 
right. Oh, Bean, who is in our Zoom group, I am going to get you to send me a message for us to encode. Now, I'd like you to send it to me privately in the Zoom chat. And everyone else, I'd like you to see if you can see if you can crack our secret message. So Bean is going to come up with um, a new message. Um, and we are going to see if we can, or I'm going to encode it, and you who are watching us um, and everyone else in the Zoom group, you're going to see if you can decode it. So, okay. So we've got part of a message here. I'm going to start off with, and I'm going to, I'm going to adjust this a little bit. Let's see if Bean can work out how I have changed. Yeah, OK, we're going to use that one. Right. OK, so let's see if you can decode this message. So we're going to have to go back to table design. We are going to use that one, I think. So remember, look at every even pixel is your clue. Go to more fill colours for this one. That's it. So see if you can work out what we are encoding using the clue. So we're nearly there. We're getting there. We're going to have to. Oh, I'm going to have to find a, my more fill colours again to uh, to get to this one. It's not quite there. It is. Is that it? There. I think that's a little bit darker on the on the real thing. Oh no. That one. There we go. This is actually a little bit harder than I thought it would be. This is definitely more tricky. I think I know how. Ah, no. Is it Bean? Um, it might start with Bean. Now, what I don't want to do is I don't want to start taking um, the using the color eyedropper because otherwise it's going to give you. Um, fact yes i am going to use the color dropper uh because i'm going to change some of these i'm going to use the color dropper again um that's a much easier way of doing it because then i know that i've got you could make it harder by color mixing pairs to get the letter colors you absolutely could and that would be really difficult <laughs> Let's have a look. Which one are we going to use next? That one. Oh, no, wrong one. Hold on. <clears throat> Eyedropper. I think I had that one before, didn't I? I mean, I need to move across. OK, there we go. Mm. 
use another color drop of one of these. And I'd just like to point out that I didn't write this message. <laughs> So for those of you who are watching, we could then fill all of this in with lots and lots and lots of different um, different colors. So let's have a little look. So can you see if you can work out what these might actually be? So what is our secret message? So the first thing to think about is that we're looking at every even pixel. Oh, Spud has it. Spud definitely gets. Oh, and yeah, Mr. Strange has got it too. So if we were to pop this in and we were to look at what it actually is trying to say to us, we have, if I pop caps up, B, E, A, and again, I didn't write this. I <laughs> S T H E B E S T Bean is the best. So we know that that came from Bean. That was brilliant. Okay, so your challenge for this week between now and our next origins of digital data um, is going to be for you to come up with a picture. Now, you don't necessarily have to create a, a colorful picture like I've done, so it, where it's just different colors here. You could make it even better by turning your picture into something that actually looks like a picture made out of squares, but has an embedded secret message in it. So what I'd like you to do is to, you can use PowerPoint, you could use paint, you could use pen and paper. It really doesn't matter as long as you have a key, which is what we have up here, which is our color key. And then a clue so that we can work out which pixels to look at. And then finally, a picture for us to encode the message in. So have fun this week see if you can create your secret messages send me your photos so i can pop them up on the gallery and i will see you um, tomorrow at 1 30 for our free powerpoint lesson where we're going to be creating animated gifs um, and then thursday is our next interactive zoom lesson um, and um, that Zoom lesson is going to be programming this week and we're going to be using uh, Python Turtle, but it's going to be embedded into the website. So you're going to be able to use it directly on there. And um, also on Tuesday for people who are wanting to look at the A-level, um, we also have the stepping up to A-level. There will be some step up to GCSE ones coming soon as well. But for now, thank you very much for coming into the lesson. Thank you for watching if you've been watching on the live stream. And I will see you later on in the week.